Hi, welcome to a special edition of Working Showbiz here on the Emerald Coast. I have with me a special guest. We have... Uh, Nikki Hedrick of a 5 Music and Entertainment and Kite Film Fest. And that's what we're here about today. We're going to talk about the Kite Film Festival. Uh, this is going to be its second year. Correct. And uh, you're going to be, it's going to be taking place at what location? It's uh, going to be at Club LA in Destin. And it's an absolutely fantastic location. Most people just associate it with concerts. But they have a full tilt movie screen and the audio and all that jazz. It's a great experience in that venue for movies. This is going to be taking place when? Uh, November 11th. November 11th of 2017. Yes, yes. What about deadlines? Uh, the deadlines to submit a short to us, we're, we're doing the cutoff on September 1st. Uh, all short films are definitely welcome to submit to us. We, we're not real rule heavy, so pretty much if you send it our way, we'll consider it for the most part. The rules and everything are definitely located, though, on kitefilmfest.com. Make it nice and easy. September 1st is when we kind of have our, our deadline, when we'd like to have our ducks in the row. <laughs> so what kind of films are you looking for and what is it that you're trying to get out of this film festival? Uh, the main thing is through groups like uh, the PSA we found this fantastic film community here and we all kind of get involved with these really cool pet projects that you know although we love them they sometimes don't see quite the light of day that we want them to. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be really cool to do a local event like this that uh, you know is free and open to the public and in a really nice space that can handle the movies and looks, you know, just looks fantastic to kind of just celebrate everybody. And although we definitely put a focus on local guys, we have submissions from all over. We definitely even included a couple from the UK and, and all that jazz. And it's just been, it's been an absolute blast, just how broad it's gone. So, so tell me a little bit about last year's, the inaugural event. Uh, you said we had some local filmmakers, a couple from out of state. Um, overall, how did the event go and how did it turn out? And It absolutely blew us away, just because we so came up with this idea on the fly. And, you know, the event happened in November. We came up with the idea pretty much in almost this time last year. So from inception to more or less completion was this very little short window. And, you know, we were having people tell us that they were actually making shorts to submit just to us, which just absolutely blew us away that people were taking us that seriously and were that right. excited about it. Right. And, um, what kind of films were you actually showing? I mean, it was quite of a wide variety. It's, it literally was a little bit of almost everything. Um, you know, a, a lot of times short films, you will get a lot of horror, which we're always great with because we love horror stuff. But um, there was a, a really kind of uplifting piece that was to do with, uh, you know, kind of making your way through grief. There was a couple really great love stories. So there's, there's, we're definitely not a genre-based a uh, film festival where you have to be one story or one idea or you know anything kind of along those lines where we, we definitely welcome all topics to, to join us. <laughs> so what kind of um, recommendations or pointers would you like to give some filmmakers out there that may be local uh, that this may be their first film festival? Um, what are some of the things that you could probably help give them advice for? Most for definitely, submission? most definitely. It's, it's you know, I'm by no means an expert, but we've been so lucky to see so much stuff. And then everybody has their own opinions about what they like and don't like anyways. But uh, I think the biggest thing is kind of being short and sweet. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with having a really flushed out idea. And we had some great submissions that were more at that 15 minute mark that, that were fantastic and held your attention span all the way through. So it's not that you have to limit it, but a lot of times if you can cut something down and get it, you know, to more like four or five minutes, film festivals like us have an easier time because then we can get more films, you know, showing throughout a four hour period, four and a half hour period, because then we can just stack all those little guys up in there and have a blast with it. So it's not that I want to necessarily limit anybody, but especially if it's your first time out, you're better off kind of going, okay, I'm going to write something and it's going to be a minute and a half. It's going to be two minutes. And that really limits you, but it also sometimes cuts down to the heart of a story versus being this really kind of broad, drawn out thing that's a little harder for an audience to sit through. Hmm. If Kevin was here, <laughs> um, 
basically he would tell you that the main thing is to make sure you have a good strong story and you do your pre-production work and make sure you plan for your editing and your post-production afterwards because it's more than just scheduling the time for shooting it you got to make sure you finish it and that's kind of one of the key things that we were getting across at the ps uh, production service association meeting that we had just uh, a few hours ago. oh no no everybody always takes you know it's 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 easy to film something to a certain degree um uh, you know i mean there's definitely a lot that goes into it but it, it's easy to be excited about that because it's it's action and it's fun and it's lots of people doing these ideas and then when it literally comes down to whether it's you or finding the right person to sit for those hours sometimes in front of a computer. I mean, the music video that uh, we put together, I probably have close to 40 to 60 hours worth of editing in a music video. You know, so it's, it's the post part of it can become so much crazier animal than most people consider. And if Steve was here, Steve would say sound. If you don't have, if you don't have a, a solid sound guy and can't clearly hear everything, you know, and all of that is and that's, absolutely, and that's absolutely valid. True. That is true. There's, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the art direction of it or, or whatever. There's, you know, it definitely, you know, a film can sometimes look pretty and not have a good enough story to really pull you in, or sometimes have a good story and the aesthetics are so hard to see. Whether it was shot too dark, which happens sometimes with first go out horror movies I see that a lot where they don't know the difference between you know slightly lit or lighting it and then fixing it in post versus no lights um, so you know the, everything's about degrees kind of a little bit but for me you know with our short film festival we kind of had a rule where if it, if it came in at a certain time and was local it was much easier to give them a shot and give them screen time where if somebody was sending us we had a few that came in at 40 minutes and it's just hard to give up that much screen time unless it's something absolutely spectacular, you know. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with that long, for sure, but it has its time and its place. And, and there is no entry fee mm -mm. for it. The, the prize, I guess, is more bragging rights. At this point, yeah. At this point. Um, however, um, if you're just trying to get started and all that, I would recommend if you're local... Uh, to um, check out two Facebook pages here, the Emerald Coast Film Group and the Production Services of Northwest Florida. Uh, if you're wanting to get some ideas or tips and something like that, definitely post on that. Uh, I know you're a strong supporter of the Production Service Association as well. No, most definitely. I mean, networking and getting to know people and putting yourself out there and and you know you just never know where any of that will lead you know for sure and something i see in the rest of my business life too i mean you, you never know where that next huge milestone will come from <laughs> well it's mid-july now the cutoff is september 1st so if you haven't really started on something uh we, we allow old stuff now. though so there's not a there's right. not a timeline on it so if you finished something last year or even the year before true true there's, there's no to. timeline so if you have something in the maybe can maybe you have something in the can that you never got a chance love to, to really see polish it. now it's an opportunity <laughs> to do that Most and then get a chance to go ahead and test it out and uh, this is kind of a small film festival so if it actually works out well you may be able to submit into something larger all that so again tell our audience one more time when, where, and where to get information. Absolutely. We are Kite Film Festival. Our information is on kitefilmfest.com. Uh, the actual event itself will be uh, November 11th. I keep hesitating on the date, but November 11th. And it will be take place at Club LA in Destin. And we're, we're just so appreciative of everybody that's helped out in any way, and definitely our home club, Help Club LA, for, for being such amazing supporters of this event. All right, so click on the link uh, in the description to get to the uh, entry site and find out more about the event. And if you want to have any other contact or some questions, feel free to contact uh, Nikki here or, or myself, RJ Murdoch, with the Production Service Association of Northwest Florida and EmeraldCoastTV.com. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you on the big screen <laughs> at the Kite Film Festival.